Cast Iron Lane. Today we are going to try a vintage recipe that is listed in the What's Cooking in the Scotland Community cookbook out of Scotland, Indiana. It was submitted by a Mrs. Leonard and we are making hamburger pie. I've already gathered all the ingredients so let's hop over to the stove to get started. So the recipe instructed me to actually cook the onion first but I've decided to go ahead with the ground beef first. It wanted me to cook the onion and then add the meat once the onion was softened, but I find that to be opposite. I like to cook my ground beef and then drain it and then add onion and spices. So that's the way I'm going to do it. So another change that I've made to the recipe is that it only calls for one pound of ground beef, but I've gone ahead and used a pound and a half because that is what I had on hand that needed to be cooked. And I don't think that'll hurt so much to have a little bit more ground beef in there. Maybe just make it a little bit more beefy, meatier. So we're changing the order. I'm adding corn and removing the green beans and we're doing a little bit more ground beef than what the recipe called for. Okay, the ground beef looks like it's pretty well cooked all the way through. I'm going to remove it from the heat and let it cool slightly before I drain it. And we'll go ahead and get started on the potatoes, which the instructions didn't tell me if I needed to peel them or not, but since they need to be mashed, I'm going to peel them and we'll get those boiling. Okay, so I have five potatoes. I've gone ahead and I've washed them. We're gonna peel them, cut them up, and get them boiled so we can mash them for the casserole.
the exhaust fan for my stove is a lot more noisy than I had thought it would be, but I've gone ahead and heated up the skillet so that the butter can melt in it nicely while we dice up this onion. So while I am dicing up this onion, I do have a pot of water on this stove and it's coming to a boil so that we can get those potatoes all softened up and nicely mashed for the casserole. Okay, so the potatoes have boiled for about 30 minutes and they are nice and soft. I've gone ahead and drained them. We're going to go ahead and cook the onion now, soften them up, and then start adding everything together for that casserole. And while I'm waiting on those onions to cook, I've grabbed some milk. I'm adding it to the potatoes so that I can go ahead and get them mashed up. Go ahead and add in as much milk as you need while you're mashing up the potatoes. I didn't want to leave mine too smooth. I wanted them a little bit more chunky since this is a casserole, but you go ahead and add in as much milk as you like. Allow the diced onions to continue cooking until they are soft and translucent. Now that the onions are cooked, I'm going to add in that ground beef, and this is also the perfect time to add any salt or pepper or other seasonings that you would like. At this point, we don't really need the ground beef or the onion to cook anymore, but we do want to make sure that we have thoroughly mixed the two together. I have only added salt and pepper here, but you can definitely be more creative and add anything else in that you like to add to your ground beef or even when you make hamburger. You could add garlic powder, even some onion powder, even though there's already onion in there, but definitely add whatever you like. So the recipe actually calls for green beans, but I'm going to go ahead and use corn because I just prefer it and also I had some extra that I needed to use up. You use whatever you'd like, corn, green beans, I guess you could even use carrots if you'd like. Um, really it can just be interchangeable with any other vegetable. So right now I'm not worrying about heating that corn up. It's getting mixed into the ground beef and it's going into the casserole dish and that's going straight into the oven and that's where it will be cooked. So the first layer of our casserole is the ground beef mixture. Just go ahead and scoop it all into your casserole dish and then we're gonna flatten it out. And I did not prepare this casserole dish in any way. I did not spray it with anything, any cooking spray or vegetable oil or Crisco. I have just put it in there bare. Before I flatten out that first layer, I do need to add the condensed tomato soup, but next time I'm thinking that I might try this with ketchup. 
So in the process of making this recipe, there were several ingredients that I figured I could switch out with something else, such as the corn and the green beans, but also like the mashed potatoes, they could be switched out for something else. And that's what I find so interesting about these community book recipes is that most of the time these meals were made with items that they typically had in their own pantry or they had on hand. And they're also ingredients that can be switched out with what you prefer or what you have in your pantry at the time. Okay, so now the recipe wants me to add salt, pepper, and a well-beaten egg to the mashed potatoes as well as some milk. So we're going to get all of that mixed in and then scoop the mashed potatoes on top of the ground beef. With this recipe, I would definitely suggest that you use fresh potatoes and not box mashed potatoes. I just feel that the box mashed potatoes might be a little too thin and light and airy and fluffy for this meal that I think is supposed to be more of a hearty meal. So the instructions said to take the mashed potatoes and spoon into mounds over the meat, but I decided I wanted to smooth it out because I didn't really feel like there were enough mashed potatoes. Maybe next time I would actually double the amount of mashed potatoes um, so I'd get bigger mounds. So I've smoothed it over and now we need to put it in an oven that's been preheated to 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. Okay, so the hamburger casserole is out of the oven and it looks really good and it actually tasted pretty good. I think in the future I might switch it up by perhaps adding some cheese, maybe using ketchup instead of the condensed tomato soup, and even maybe I would just completely nix the mashed potatoes and use maybe canned biscuits or even homemade biscuits to give it more of that hamburger taste. But I think there's a lot of different ways you could actually make this. If you do try it, let me know in the comments below and if you mix it up at all, let me know what you did. Thank you.